Good morning, everyone. Good morning. morning. Okay, so the title of my sermon is A Mother's Warm Embrace. So first I wanted you to get one thing out of the way. I am eight months pregnant. Yes. Sir. In case you didn't notice, it's a girl. Yes. I have two boys already. Seven and four. Well, seven, almost eight, almost four. Um, due November 5th. Okay? That's all the information. So I guarantee you after this, somebody's going to ask me a question about one of those things. But I already said it. All right. <laughs> I'm testing you. Who's paying attention? No, I'm kidding. Okay, so, yeah. With my children, still young, you know, they're three and seven, almost four, almost eight, and being pregnant, uh, yeah, motherhood has really been on my mind and on my heart for a while, and yeah, I just feel this is such a special time in my life right now, and also with the rebirth workshops happening, where we're really hearing more deeply about the contents of True Mother's Heart as like a window into Heavenly Mother, God's motherly heart, I've been thinking, praying, reflecting a lot about Heavenly Mother. You know, I feel like I really want to understand Heavenly Mother better and True Mother better um, because that's a way for me to understand myself better as a woman, as a mother, and then pass that love on to my children. So, yeah, True Mother says that we need to understand God's essence. So the question is, God, what, what is your essence? You know, what is the nature of your heart as a mother? That heart that has yet to be completely expressed and completely felt. Um, so yeah, just today in, our, in my sermon, <laughs> I wanted to share just some of my own journey so far in motherhood and my own reflections and how it connects back to true mother and heavenly mother. And this is really through the lens of my own experience as a mom. And I hope just you'll gain maybe some seed or nugget in your own journey uh, in your own life, to also connect more deeply to God as a mother. And I know after today, in the next few weeks, we'll be hearing, hearing a lot about Las Vegas from the young people and everyone who was there and the, the pastors, and there's a lot of, um, uh, of that motherly love coming our way. So I hope I can just maybe start, open the door a little bit. So just a little bit about how motherhood is in our family, I'm going to tell you a few stories. So uh, when we wake up in the morning, my kids jump out of bed, and they love to come in and lay in bed with mommy and papa. And sometimes it turns into a fight because both of them want to be next to me. And I'm like, guys, I have two sides, one here, one here. They're like, no, we want to be between you and papa. We can't, nobody can be on the edge of the bed. We have to be between you two. But we both want to be one next to you. Both of us have to be next to mommy. So then 7 a.m., 6.30 a.m., we're already screaming. And I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah. And, you know, one time, my, son, my younger son, my three-year-old, he's, like, cuddling with Papa. He's hugging him. And I'm just like, oh, that's so sweet. And I'm like, Benjamin you love Papa, don't you? And he's like, no, I love Mommy. <laughs> and I was like, well, Benjamin, you can love Mommy and Papa. And he's like, no, I love Mommy. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> you know, I can't go to the bathroom alone. Just the other day, my son threw a temper tantrum because I, I locked him out of the bathroom because I wanted to go to the bathroom by myself. It's like, how could you reject me? <laughs> My husband can be in there for hours. They don't care. <laughs> so, or you know, they'll come and find me somewhere in the house and ask me for help. Mommy, mommy, mommy. And I'm like, go ask Papa. Wait, you were in the room with him just a minute ago. You could have asked him. Anyway, if you compare how often they say mommy compared to how often they say Papa, it's not even a fair comparison. So I've definitely experienced that the motherly love and the motherly heart is kind of the center of the family. When I am unhappy, when I'm stressed, when I'm struggling, nothing goes well. 
And, you know, I want to be like, oh my God, this is such a burden. <laughs> why do you guys, like, why are you upset when I'm upset? Like, just, like, deal with your own thing. <laughs> Don't worry about me. I'm just going to be upset over here. It doesn't, worry. it doesn't work like that. Um, but everything is so much more peaceful when I'm feeling at peace with myself, when I'm fully, feeling full in my heart. So then even when they do have a temper tantrum, it goes much more smoothly. I'm much, much more able to calm and soothe them when I'm peaceful. So in her memoir, her mother says, quote, when a child complains of stomach ache, his mother lays, lays him on her lap and rubs his tummy without a single word. Her hands may be gnarled and rough, but in a few moments, the child feel be feels better. This may be a simple approach, but it is a practice based on love. We all dim dimly remember our mother's warm touch. This is the very touch with which I long to embrace all of humankind as mother of the universe and mother of peace. As we know from our own experience, a mother hears her child cry very clearly, and she has no thought but to quickly run to her child. This is because a mother's love and attention are directed solely toward her children. A mother will walk through a fiery pit without hesitation to save her child. Yet this motherly love is so crucial for our children's emotional growth and development. And we, feel, we know this, we feel this, even in the way that if a mother is unable to give that love to her children, either because of sickness or her own limitations, we feel it's a tragedy because we need that love. And you know, as we know from Two Parents Teaching, we grow through four realms of heart, right? And we start off as children receiving love. Later we learn to love as a sibling, and then as a spouse, and then as a parent. Um, but it's not like a graduation. You finish one, I'm done with that. Let me go to the next one. That one's over. It's a progression, it's growth. So that child's love, that child's heart, that need, to receive unconditional love still exists within us. It's present whether we're eight or 88. So what is the nature of God's love as a mother? I have a question for all of you. What is, what is God's dream? What is God seeking? Happiness. Happiness among each other, yes. What is God's dream? What are we working for? What are we working so hard for? What is God's dream? Peace. <laughs> Family, all right. So actually a few Sundays ago uh, in the sermon it was said that God wants to dwell with us. So God wants a roommate? No. <laughs> God wants a family. Um, <laughs> see what I did there? Okay. So True Father said that the core of the universe is the parent-child relationship. And I feel God wants the deepest, most intimate relationship with us. And where is that deepest, most intimate, closest relationship? I believe it's the key is right here in the mother's womb. It's in the mother's womb. There's no time in your life where you are more completely embraced surrounded, cared for. In the mother's womb, every single need is perfectly and immediately taken care of. You are one in body. For nine months, you and your mother are completely one. It's perfect timing. Everything is given without reservation. In that embrace, you know your mother's heartbeat. You know your mother's voice. You know, when, you, when babies are born, born, they recognize their mother's voice. You see videos of babies crying after they're born, crying, 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 and then they hear mama's voice and they start calming down because they know, they hear the mother's voice already. And even when they grow older, mommy's voice, mommy's embrace is soothing. Uh, in her memoir, uh, True Mother, 
she's, when she's talking about the time right before accepting her role and her responsibility as the only begotten daughter, well, marrying True Father and, uh, you know, taking that responsibility. And she says, she has this, you know, a spiritual experience. She says, it's very short, but she says, I hear, heard the words, the time is near. It was the voice of God. I had heard it often when I was a child. Like, this just recently struck me. I had heard it often when I was a child. And that's the kind of relationship that God wants and long with us, to embrace us perfectly, that skin-to-skin -skin contact. There's no fear, there's no judgment, there's no uh, separation. There's no worrying about our worth. God wants to tell us, don't you know that I am in you and you are in me? We're the same. I made you. You are me. I am you. And then we know God's voice. It's the voice that surrounded us, vibrated through us since we were born, since before we were born. Um, you know, we, True Mother talks about the 99.999%. I don't know how many nines are in there. Sometimes there's more and sometimes there's less. But <laughs> anyway, so round it up to 99% and the 1%. You know, the sperm provides the spark necessary to start the process, but everything the baby needs in order to, to grow, where does it come from? It comes from me. Uh, I read somewhere that like, making a child is like the ultimate group project. You know, we, I do 99% of the work, but we both get an A. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so everything the baby needs, all the nutrients, the warmth, the care, everything comes from me. There's no choice. There's nowhere else to come from. I give my essence so that the baby can be born and the baby can grow. So I feel like this is the same for God. God gives her essence so that we have life, so that we can grow. We are also an intrinsic part of God's identity. You know, who makes the parent a parent? It's the child. I'm a mother because of my children. You know, when you're pregnant, your whole body changes. Maybe you remember that time if you were pregnant before. Maybe that time is ahead of you, but your whole body changes. You know, I'm huffing and puffing up the stairs because there's no room for my lungs anymore. All the organs rearrange. They say that the womb expands between 500 to 1,000 times its normal size when you're, when you're pregnant. And it's not just our body that stretches, but it's also our hearts. I read a research paper recently about, uh, in a, in, about psych, in a, a psychological research paper where, the, where the, uh, the authors interviewed a bunch of women who became mothers and they were looking at identity, like how we perceive our identity and who we are, our sense of ourselves. So when a child is born, the mother doesn't give birth just to the child, she gives birth to herself. She's a new person. Her identity expands. Her sense of self expands to include the child. And this is true for women who gave birth to their own children and also for women who adopted children in their research. But when we become mothers, a woman sees the world not only through her own eyes, but through her, through her children's eyes. Even our brain chemistry changes so that we're so much in tune and hypersensitive to the child's needs. And it's not something that can be turned off. Once it's turned on, it's staying on. You know, my mom is, uh, no, I'm not gonna say your age, but I'm 38, <laughs> but my mom still asks me, are you happy? Are you okay? I'm like looking a little tired. She's like, are you okay? You know, it doesn't stop. Yeah, I once asked my husband, how often do you think about the kids in a day? And he said, well, when I'm in the same room with them. And I just had to laugh, because I'm thinking about them all the time. I can't stop. 
you know, I'm here, I'm standing here in this room and giving this sermon, but part of my brain is also aware that my, my youngest is in the baby room, and I really hope he doesn't pee in his pants. And my oldest is upstairs, and I really hope he's happy because every Sunday he complains about coming to church. You know, I'm at the train station somewhere. My kids aren't even there. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, what if one of them fell on the train tracks? What would I do? I'm making, a, I'm making an escape plan. <laughs> They're not even there. But I'm thinking about them, and I'm concerned about them. You know, we, we teach in our movement that God absolutely will work until the day that, the, that God's dream is fulfilled. And I feel like, yes, it's because God is almighty, God is all-powerful, God is perfect. God is the alpha and the omega, so the beginning and the end must be the same. But also, if God, our Heavenly Mother, loses her children, it's unbearable. To lose us would mean to lose an essential part of herself. True Mother says in her memoir, with a desperate and urgent heart, as if searching for a needle in the midst of a sandstorm, while unable to see an inch in front of me, I proclaim the truth of heaven's providence. What is that truth? Like a person who is beside herself with desperation, I embrace the world again and again, loving all your children as my own. With my whole heart, I embrace even those among your children who, unaware of the truth, have misunderstood and even persecuted me. This is True Mother's heart and a reflection of God's motherly love. I'm desperate to embrace you. Just let me be with you. Let me embrace you. As children, we may resist the embrace, especially when we're feeling lost or in pain or confused. You know, when my kids are in the midst of a tantrum and I say, oh, Oh, poor baby, do you want a hug? And they say, no! They yell at me. <laughs> but I learned that, you know, when, when they're ready, I still want to embrace them because I know they'll feel better. So I just wait until they're ready and let them, until they're ready to let themselves be hugged. God knows us. God remembers each and every one of us and will be patient with us until we're ready to let down our defenses and allow that warm, that safe, that perfect, that giving embrace. So again, uh, yeah, True Mother said that 99.99% of birth and rebirth is through the mother, and 0.001% is through the father. So I have to spend 0.001% of my sermon also talking about the father, right? Okay. <laughs> so, you know, I'm not a father, so... I can only speak from my perspective, observing um, fatherhood in my husband. So, uh, I'll tell you another story. When I was pregnant with our first child, I asked my husband, you know, Mike, if something happened, you know, there was an accident or I got, a, got sick and you had to choose, if you had to choose between me and the baby, you had to choose, who are you going to save, me or the baby? And he, without even thinking, without hesitation, he's like, I'm going to save you, of course. And I was like, oh my gosh, how dare you? <laughs> you saved this baby. I worked so hard. <laughs> but I realized many times he's actually thinking about me more than I'm able to think about me. Because my identity, <laughs> my essence is tied up so much with the children Sometimes there's like, it's just, you're so absorbed. I can't even think about myself. But when he, you know, really just, he cares about me, think about me more than I'm able to think about me in that moment. Um, it actually helps me. It comforts me. It helps me be a mo better mother. So I just wanted to say that 0.001% is not nothing. It makes a difference. So, um, I wanted to thank everyone for listening to my stories and my reflections, and I wanted to conclude with a meditation. So, if we could uh, get some lovely music going, and as we do that, I just want to invite you to sit comfortably. 
You can plant your feet on the floor. Just relax your shoulders. Hopefully get something going. Okay. So release any tension you feel in your hands or in your shoulder or in your face. Just sit comfortably. And if you feel comfortable, you can close your eyes. And just take three deep breaths in and out. And in. As you're breathing out, just turn to any atten- turn your attention to any place of tension in your body. Just release the tension with each breath out. And with a gentle and open attention, notice the state of your heart. Without any judgment, just acknowledge what you're feeling right now. Scan and sense if there is a part of you that's asking for attention or asking for healing. Is there a place of doubt or fear or separation or stress? If you find that place of fear, try and connect with your longing to be held in unconditional love. In your doubt or in your feeling of unworthiness, connect with that longing to be told, you are enough, you are worthy. We want to acknowledge that longing heart, that desire to be held and embraced. If you like, you can put your hand on your heart and just acknowledge yes. This is what I feel. If you feel nothing, you can acknowledge that too. There's no judgment. No, you have, you shouldn't feel this way. Just it is what it is. Just take a few more deep breaths and sit with that feeling in your heart, whatever it may be. I want to invite you to bring to mind the image or the sense of a person, a spiritual figure or a divinity that you associate with compassion. You may see the face of your grandmother, your friend, your parents, or an image of Jesus or Buddha, or you may call to mind an all-loving God a heavenly mother. Just with a silent prayer, ask this being to be present with you. Imagine this being gazing at you with unconditional love. Those eyes regard you with understanding and complete acceptance. Placing your attention on your heart and aware of your longing, experience this compassionate being as absolutely present and available and wanting to be here with you. And imagine this being, this compassionate being, this presence as a radiant and boundless field of light. You are surrounded by this warm light held in this loving embrace. And with each breath in, imagine you are breathing in this light into your heart, into your being. Let's take three more deep breaths. And again in. Breathe in the warmth and light. See how fully you can surrender, letting go of your hurt and fear and 
pain and sorrow. Let it dissolve into this merciful presence. You can even imagine what words might come from this compassionate and embracing presence towards you. You are enough, or I see you, or you are loved. And allow your body, your mind, your awareness to just release and merge into this loving awareness. I am worthy and I am loved. Feel you, if you feel your heart contract or tense again in doubt or fear, gently feel and acknowledge that tension and reach out once more to the compassionate presence. Take a few more deep breaths. As we come back and conclude our meditation, and open your eyes when you are ready. Thank you so much for participating with me and just acknowledging whatever you felt, it is what is. Even if you felt nothing, no problem, it's okay. Now I wanted to see if anyone would like to share something from, did you feel anything from this meditation? This is a little experiment. Anyone feels bold? We can, we can fade out the music. Anybody? I saw my dad hang, raise his hand, so I have to call on him. Okay, one second. Hello. Um. Well, uh, my inspiration from the breathing exercise is, what do you want me to do? Okay, I'll come with her. Well, if we think about give and take, give and take, give and take, everybody has a, a hand, yes? There's space in between each. There's space. There's five fingers, but you have space in between. So there's give and receive. Give and receive. Give and receive. So often we're accustomed to saying, breathe in, then breathe out. Breathe in, then breathe out. But there's a different way of looking at it, and that's to say, give and take. Give and take. If you know a three-year-old, Taking is what they know. If they have an older sibling, the toys, taking is what they know. And that's where they're at. That's fine. That's okay. Because they're growing. There's ongoing refinement happening as we mature and as we deal with conflict. Conflict is there to teach us a lesson, just like pain is. And I know my wife suffered more pain than I did. We've had six children, and I know there's a lot of pain and near death during childbirth, which is something I cannot do. So I give her respect, respect, respect. And you too. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Katerina, for that meditation. I did a similar one on Thursday, and I appreciated then and today that you allowed me to feel nothing and not feeling bad. But today, I felt something. I could open my hands and receive. I also, we made an exercise and we uh, filled in a graphic paper of a person. And at the very end, I had a really good inspiration for the uh, Bridge of Peace ceremony on Saturday because I was thinking, oh, I want to prepare a gift. And I had a gift in mind, very beautiful, what I thought would be beautiful, but the person might not appreciate it the same way because of her condition. I don't want to talk about that in particular. 
But then I thought, okay, so now I have to prepare a gift, what she can appreciate because she's more sensory with her fingers versus the way I perceive beauty, like ears and eyes, right? And so I'm so grateful that I had that. It just came. Morning, everyone. Um, basically, it's about the meditations for today. It's like you, I am a mother, grandmother, a sister, and a wife. There is a lot of things really going on in my mind, in my heart, 24 hours a day. But because of these meditations, it reminds me that being a mother, we also need to be really put ourselves in a way that we could be able to really talk directly to God. Through the meditation is the best way to really to have the heart-to-heart -heart talk. And it's the only moments where you could be able to truly put it into it with your heart and with your soul. Thank you for reminding us. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for listening. I hope you gained even a tiny nugget from this time together. I just want to conclude with this one quote that I uh, read in this book, Motherhood and God. Um, Wherever God our mother takes us, we will be safe and provided for. Whether in cold or heat, storm or drought, we will be protected. When at, wherever we journey to, we will still be at home. For the presence of our mother's body is closer to us than our geographical location. God is closer to us than the ground we stand on. Even though we have never seen our mother, perhaps we are quite unaware of her or even deny her existence. She is in perfect and constant intimacy with us. And when we are born into the light of her presence, we will recognize that she has been with us all along. Thank you very much, and let us finish. Thank you.